Now, Judy Murray, been a tennis coach for almost 30 years, watching, of course, her own sons, Andy and Jamie, grow up to be Wimbledon champions. And now in her new TV show, Driving Force, Judy is putting a spotlight on the challenges faced particularly by women in sport. And Judy joins me now. It's so good to see you. And what a brilliant series this has been. Um, it's a real eye-opener, Judy, and some incredible women, real trailblazers. Yeah, it really has been. It's uh, 10 of Britain's most successful sportswomen. And it's the opportunity to tell their backstory because we so often see the end result, don't we? The performance, you know, the, whether it's the, the World Cup or Wimbledon or the Olympics, but we so rarely get the chance to see or hear what went into getting them to the top and all the, the people that were involved, the parents, the teachers, the coaches, the role models. Um, so, yeah, of course, I absolutely loved it. And, and as you say, it will raise a lot of the issues and challenges, I think, that still exist for women in sport. And hopefully that will lead to some action that will help us to create, a, I suppose, a better future for the next generation of female sports stars. No, definitely. It gets better and better, doesn't it? Because it wasn't all that long ago that you had your own career in tennis. And it was really difficult for you as a, as a woman. There wasn't as many opportunities. It was harder. Yeah, I mean, it was a long time ago. Like for me, it was about 40, 40 odd years ago. And the tennis world is a completely different place now for women, largely thanks to the efforts of Billie Jean King and her gang yes. 50 years ago, who yes. created the breakaway tour from the men, which is currently the, the Women's Tennis uh, Association tour, which has huge visibility and huge opportunities for women to raise money, mm. uh, not raise money, earn, earn money. Sure. So um, it's a very different place. But I think that, you know, in, in sport, it's still a very male dominated domain, which is understandable. You know, it, it, we, we are catching up. And I think pre-COVID, we were in the best position that we ever had been in, in terms of momentum and visibility and opportunity, but still quite a long way behind in lots of respects. Mm. So, you know, there's not much women's sport on TV at the moment. So driving force being on Sky Sports has really given it a visibility at a time when there's not um, not too much to, to watch. And of course, the visibility is key because it's that whole thing of if you can see it, you can, you can be it. Yeah, exactly. But I remember there was a very, very important moment, and I don't think we should underestimate this. When your son was congratulated, Andy, because both your sons are incredible. But Andy was congratulated on winning two Olympic golds, the first person to do that. And he very politely, but very firmly said, actually, the Williams sisters have already done that. They've won four, so behave. And I just, I almost thought, yeah, Judy will like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. The, the great thing I think about Andy is that he, he says what is perfectly obvious to him. And actually he does it consistently and he, and he does it very, you know very well because he's such a student of the game on both the men's side and the women's side and you know his voice carries such a lot of yeah. a lot of weight and it creates talking points and column inches and so forth on behalf of the women and I know that you know all of the women on on the tennis tour are so grateful to him for using his voice to stand up yeah. for them so he's a great male advocate and we need that because most of the key decision makers in sport are, are men and uh, we need to bring more women to the, the top table. Absolutely. You've done a wonderful job. They're a credit to you, both of them. Now, look, how are your boys? Because, you know, I know that Jamie's there in Australia flying the flag, but Andy, poor Andy couldn't go, which is a massive, huge disappointment to him because he was training so hard and, and looking so sharp. Yeah, J Jamie's in Australia and he's in... He's in day 11, I think, of his 14-day mm. quarantine. He's allowed out of his room five hours a day. So he gets yes. a knock on the door at half six in the morning, which means he can leave the room, go and train, go to the gym, have food, and be back in the room for half 11. And then that's him kind of oh. locked, not quite locked in, but that's him yeah. in for the rest of the day. But um, Andy was unable to go because obviously you have to turn in a negative test before you fly. And he unfortunately was tested positive the day before the, or a couple of days before the, the mm. flight was due to go. There were a number of charter flights that took players from, I think, seven major airports around the world into Australia. The whole thing was very well controlled. So, um, of course, it, he tried to find a way to get in at a later date, but that wasn't going to be possible. It's... Um, understandable you know with all the risks involved as Dr Hillary was saying with travel from mm. all corners of the globe and bringing the virus into a country that's done that worked so hard for so long to uh, eradicate it it's so yeah disappointing for him and yeah. because the tennis circuit is so 
disrupted like everything else by COVID. There's very little else to play in if you're not in Australia. I mean, the, everything is, is over there at the moment. And uh, I think what he's found when he's looked for tournaments in Europe, lower level tournaments that he might be able to go and compete in, he's finding that you've got to quarantine when you go to France, you've got to quarantine when you go sure. to Italy. And if you're if it's a hard quarantine and you're not allowed out of the hotel room, you can't practice, you can't train, so therefore you can't prepare. So it's a real challenge, I think, for the players um, at the moment, as it is for all of us. No, absolutely. It's just a shame, isn't it? Judy, do you think, looking ahead to the summer, there's any way that Wimbledon will take place in any shape or form? I think that um, the All England Club, which is Wimbledon, um, it put out a, a a statement some months ago that that showed three scenarios and one was that it goes ahead as normal right. two was it goes ahead with limited crowds and three was that it goes ahead behind closed doors so it seems like their plan mm. <clears throat> certainly as of then was it will go ahead in some shape or form but it will depend of course on mm. the state of um what's happening with exactly. the pandemic um, exactly. in well, the country fingers at the crossed, time. Exactly, fingers crossed, fingers <laughs> crossed, because we need it, we really do. And Judy, thank you so much for driving force. It continues tonight, 9 o'clock on Sky Sports Mix. And of course, you can catch up, the joy of being able to catch up with the full series on Sky Documentaries. Thank you, it's always great to talk to you and love to your boys. You too. Right, after the break, reunite. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.